Yes team, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. We are back here at CrossFit Seminyak. I seem to be here a lot basically because it's awesome for filming, it's awesome for training, it's outdoors, kind of. Kind of, pretty much. It's got a roof, but the, the walls are made of netting, so it's pretty much outdoors. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a functional hypertrophy. So basically functional movements for the building of lean muscle mass, specifically for upper body. So I split upper and lower. I don't, I don't do push-pull legs, I don't do individual body part splits, but I also don't do the other end of the spectrum, which is full body session. So I'm a big fan of basically having an upper body session, a lower body session, and then a conditioning session, either in the gym, which I did yesterday with a training partner, or usually at the moment, going for a run or a hike. So functional hypertrophy today, there's a couple of different sections of this workout the first one even though it is hypertrophy based i still like to warm up and innovate that central nervous system so it's basically a primer is what i'm going to start with today upper body primer nice and explosive so primer if you are unaware is basically something that's light not too much volume to fatigue you but just enough to really kind of pr prime and wake up your central nervous system for lower body that would be like a jump variation trying to minimize the impact or a power clean which is what i did in my uh, lower body strength session the other day but for my upper body hypertrophy session my muscle building session today what i'm going to do is basically remove the legs from it, but I'm gonna do a leaning forward throw with a medicine ball. This is what I'm gonna do, three or four reps, about 30 seconds, then go again, two to three rounds, that's just enough to really get those push levers working and primed, and then we'll be getting on to the chunky stuff. But first of all, the primer, check it out. And that is section one, which is the primer done. Feeling nice and loose. It does kind of limber you up actually, especially when you're fairly kind of naturally elastic and ballistic. Executing things with speed, but that are fairly light, just seem to kind of assist in making you feel nice and limber. So that's section one of the session done, the primer. Now section two, which is effectively the hypertrophy focus compound. And again, everything that's in the session should effectively be reverse engineered from an objective. The objective today is to elicit a hypertrophic effect. And it's not necessarily purely on strength. So I basically usually switch between the two. I do two upper body days a week. One of them is strength based, one of them is, is purely kind of hypertrophy based. So the hypertrophy focus today, we're gonna to start off with bench press and effectively, I'm gonna be doing three sets with 60 to 90 seconds between to absolute failure. It's something I don't do too much of, but I'm gonna give it a go today. And the target is for the first set, you wanna be hitting around 15, 16 reps. Absolutely flipping maximum 90 seconds rest between the second that you rack it and the second you start the first rep on your next set. So I aim around about 75 seconds actually counted and then straight back into it from there. And you, what you should be looking at between set one and set two is it should drop by, I don't know, 40%. It should be fairly significant. If you do 15 reps on the first set and then you get to the second set 75 seconds later, and you're doing 14 reps, chances are you bitched out on set one. I mean, it should be about 60% of your one rep max, so you're not looking at going stupidly heavy to the degree that you get pinned and it'd be dangerous. But set one should be around about 15, set two should drop about 40%, and then set three should drop about kind of 30%-ish from there. A phenomenal pump within literally five minutes of work. I'm just gonna do standard bench press. Let's see how I get on. So I normally do this little structure once every couple of months. I don't like to do it too much. I don't like going to failure completely. I like to leave a little bit, a little bit in the tank. But that was, uh, that was spicy. So first set, 16. Second set, nine, which is kind of about right. And uh, third set, seven, which was happy with that seventh rep. 
was a squeeze if I had to keep my hips on the bench. That would not have been legal. But no, it's really good, man. I enjoyed that. So that's effectively the main part of voluminous hypertrophy, the first section done. Now what I'm gonna do is take a short break and then move on to a functional push-pull superset. Give me a second though, I need some water. Right, so now moving on to the functional push-pull superset. Pull-ups and chin-ups as standard are fairly heavy in my program, just by virtue of kind of the places that I train and the equipment that they've got. And this place has a rope for rope climbs. And usually whenever that is the case, I like to mix it up. Like I say in a lot of my videos, guys, if you're in a new place and in a new gym and that gym has equipment that you don't normally have access to, take advantage of it. It's a great way to mix it up. So what I'm basically gonna do, and here's an extra kind of little bit of context of what's happening today. My main hypertrophic focused compound movement was normal bench, that is a horizontal push. That means that the functional push-pull superset that I wanna do, I wanna do a vertical push and a vertical pull. So vertical pull in the form of the rope climbs and then vertical push in the form of some single arm overhead press. I'm a huge fan of single arm overhead, whether it's on like a landmine and you're kneeling or whatever, or whether or not it's just kind of yanking a dumbbell up. Nice, strong, sturdy base through the trunk and the core, and then pushing from there. Two rope climbs for me today, followed by between 10 and 12 reps each arm. But what I'm also gonna to do to add a little bit more volume in there is I'm gonna throw some deliberate core work into the mix and basically make it a tricep. They've got a GHD here, so what I'm gonna do is basically just do some pulsating movements. I'm not gonna go all the way back. I'm not gonna kind of slap my hands on the ground, just moving a very minor range of motion, flexing the spine, slight relax, and then flex again. Two rope climbs between 10 and 12, single arm overhead press, and then about 10 to 15 seconds worth of pulsating movements on the GHD. Three rounds, let's go. That is two rounds through of the functional push-pull superset slash triceps I'm doing core. It's the middle ground, so what we're about to move on, which I'll explain in a minute after my third set, after I'm waffling and procrastinating by myself time, is a little bit more voluminous, but because there are a couple of isolated movements in there, it's obviously it gives you a localized burn, but it's nowhere near as taxing as things like single arm overhead where everything is flipping working to stay stable. So this is the one where I'd say the most volume is the middle chunk of the session. Just the one that absolutely flipping gasses you. So I'm trying to kind of move through fairly quick. I've got a bit lazy with my rests over the last couple of months. So I said in one of my recent videos, actually I'm just trying to chip away at my body's ability to recover a bit quicker again, bring it back to what it was and kind of drive home that adaptation. And that's going well, but this is definitely the gassy one. I think the second rope climb halfway up always just feels a little bit sketchy. Like I'm not gonna wanna hang on with one hand for too long, but it's all good. I think we all know what I'm doing and I'm bitching out and talking to you for no flipping reason because I should be getting on in my workout. Third set, let's fucking go.
Well, that sucked. That was definitely obviously harder than the primer and, and even harder than the bench. Bench obviously is a bit of a localized burn, but the fact that you just got so much blood pumping, that's surprisingly kind of gassy and aerobic. But with the amount of eccentric load coming down through the rope, obviously you get nice, huge amounts of kind of hypertrophic effect because the rest is quite low. Rest period, for those of you that don't know, is an extra little hack, is basically one of the biggest dictators of growth hormone release. So because you keep that rest period fairly short, you're gonna get a huge amount of oxygenated, nutrient-filled blood pumping to the areas that you need and a massive growth hormone release after the session as well. Ah, and especially in this heat, that's only gonna help because this is basically like living in a sauna. Right, so moving on to section four, the fourth and final section, we've had the primer, We've had kind of the hypertrophic focused compound lift, which is our horizontal push with our bench. We've then had our functional push-pull superset with a little bit of core on the end in the form of vertical push and pull, because obviously vertical push is a different movement pattern to what we did in the early stages with the bench. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some isolated stuff just to get a little bit of a pump on. I'm gonna do some banded bicep curls and banded tricep extensions. A lot of people think this might not be too functional, but at the end of the day, there's still elbow flexors and extensors. That's incredibly important and ahead of a lot of movements. And just getting a certain amount of uh, tissue perfusion in those areas is only gonna be beneficial. And with the session that we've just done, there's a huge number of muscle fibers that are already torn. All this does is get is increase that tissue perfusion after the session, again, increasing the amount of kind of total blood pumping. So the fourth and final kind of section of my upper body hypertrophy session as a hybrid athlete. That final section is basically just around maximizing blood flow. Again, everything that any single one of us should do should be reverse engineered from a particular objective. There should be an objective for each single individual component of every session and maximizing blood flow, maximizing growth hormone release and shredding those last few fibers is basically the objective of this fourth and final section. Numbers that we're going for, I am only doing two rounds, but I am also gonna bolt some core on the end and I'm gonna do some hanging stuff because I love some spinal decompression work. So I'm gonna do about 25 to 30 bicep curls, 25 to 30 tricep extensions, and then 10 each side, so 20 in total. Basically half tuck, hanging crunches. One leg stays straight, one knee up, we are unilateral creatures, that is how we walk anyway, so it makes sense to work it that way. And then 10 tiny little kind of pelvic tucks from there. Two rounds only, let's go. And we are finito. Section four done, the primer, perfect to warm me up. Then the bench, the main kind of hypertrophic focus compound lift. Then the push-pull superset with a little bit of core on the end and then the little kind of pump set, tissue perfusion burner for buys, tries and a little bit of core to finish off. Absolutely in love with that kind of session. If you look at it on paper, it doesn't look like too much volume. But like I've spoken about before, I think volume is, it's not overrated. You need a certain amount of it to elicit the adaptation that you need. But to truly drive adaptation, I think people, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't train with the level of intensity that they should do in the weights room. And I think if you're doing a set of 10 and your RIR, your reps in reserve is six, when you finish, you could have squeezed that 16, 17. I don't really know at that, that sub-maximal level what kind of adaptation you're gonna be driving. So I'm not all about going to failure. I know I did that at the beginning, but I also specified that I don't do that that often. But breaking your gym program into upper body sessions and lower body sessions, upper body strength and lower body strength at the beginning of the week, and then at the tail end of the week, upper body hypertrophy, lower body hypertrophy. Wow. Not a bad system, right guys? If you did enjoy this video, please do smash that like button. It only takes you two seconds, but it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly beneficial and punts me into the deep dark waters of the YouTube algorithm, which I'll be very grateful for. Any questions on anything, any requests or suggestions or anything, anything, anything that you wanna see from me and my channel, just please put them down in the comment section below. And as always, you absolute flipping bunch of legends. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will see you guys in the next video.